This is the cheapest 1TB SSD that I could find on Amazon, at least delivered by Prime next day delivery anyway. And this costs just £41.54 for a 1TB SSD, that's crazy! This is the Fanjang 1TB 2.5-inch SATA SSD. Let's take a quick look around it and then get it in my test PC to see how this thing handles. This claims up to 560 megabytes per second reads and 510 megabytes per second writes, which for a SATA SSD isn't the absolute limit, that's a little over 600, but it's close. Of course, compared to the M.2 SSDs we're all used to now, this seems positively antiquated. I mean, only like twice the speed of a hard drive, what's the point? Well, as I showed in a recent test, there's quite a lot of a point for gaming. Check that out in the cards above if you want to know more. The drive itself is a pretty typical 2.5 inch form factor with mounting holes in the sides and bottom, SATA power and data connectors on the side, and that's about it. This thing is pretty devoid of branding, with only the Fanjang logo up at the top and the words solid state drive in the most typewriter and yet uneven font you could possibly imagine. Seriously, that's it. There isn't much else to say, so let's plug this thing in, fire it up, and see what it can do. I am happy to report that this, unlike the £10 1TB SSDs, this thing is legit. A full 1TB of capacity, admittedly only at SATA 3 speeds though. Crystal Diskmark has it right at the quoted figures. 561.6 megabytes per second reads and 518 on writes, that's actually slightly higher than quoted on the right, not significantly, but it's higher, and that's great. It's perfectly good for a SATA SSD. Although I did want to throw in some other drives for comparison's sake, two USB-C SSDs, and then a couple of M.2 options, specifically a Gen 4 and a Gen 5. The same sequential test has the Fanjang dropping barely uh, any read performance with 505 uh, megabytes per second writes and uh, reads and 510 on writes. But considering that even the USB-C drives lost at least 200 megabytes per second, that's impressive from the Fanjang. With a random 4 kilobyte block and a key depth of 32, the Fanjang actually climbs places on the USB-C drives which isn't too surprising, random block requests aren't great over USB, but you'd be surprised just how close the Gen 4 and Gen 5 drives got to the SATA SSD in this test. The Solidine P44 Pro was less than twice as fast in writes, and almost exactly twice as fast on reads. Considering the drive is otherwise a power of 10 faster, that's impressive work from the Fanjang. With a Q depth of 1, the read performance gap stays the same, actually technically closes ever so slightly, although the write gap grows a fair bit to the NVMe drives. Still not in line with the available bandwidth though, which is impressive, but still. As for AS SSD, I've been able to throw in a couple of Gen 3 M.2s for a slightly fair comparison, and well, at least in the top end sequential test, it doesn't look amazing. To be fair, this is still pretty decent performance for a SATA SSD, and this is an apples to pears comparison after all. Although I do find it interesting that the USB-C SSDs are so much faster, at least at the top end. With a random 4 kilobyte block size, the Fanjang moves up the charts again to basically tied with a Samsung 970 EVO Plus Gen 3 NVMe SSD. At least on writes anyway, reads are a little under half, but that isn't bad at all, especially for a SATA drive. With 64 threads available, we get more performance, although the gap to the Gen 3 drives expands quite a lot. It is in line with the bandwidth limits for the most part, uh, although at least the Fanjang is still faster than both USB-C SSDs. Lastly for the synthetic test is ATTO Disk Benchmark, which shows a fairly average performance. Again, good for a SATA drive, but the top end just isn't there by comparison. Both USB-C drives, as an example, beat this at any block size larger than 32 kilobytes. Still, again for a SATA drive, 
This is fine. As for file transfers, transferring a large file set from a much faster drive, the Fanjang sits at around 400 megabytes per second on average. It bounces up and down a fair bit, with peaks up to the high 500s and dips down in the low 200s. While it is a shame that this isn't just perfectly pinned at 510 megabytes per second as it claims, it's still pretty fast. Duplicating these files stresses both reads and writes simultaneously as well, so the expected performance is around half of the peak, and that's true here. This sits at around the 200 to 250 megabytes per second mark, which is actually pretty good for a full-scale duplication. Naturally, since this isn't a housing, even a plastic one like this, and isn't exactly ripping performance, this thing didn't get hot at all. 46 degrees Celsius was the peak, and that's nothing in the world of SSDs. It's safe to say that this thing does exactly what it says on the tin, and that's great. So, is the Fanjang 1TB SSD worth buying? Well, if you're after a 1TB 2.5-inch SSD, I don't see why not. Just because it's the cheapest available and isn't a major brand name you might recognize, doesn't mean it isn't legit. The performance is spot on for a SATA SSD, the capacity is not in question, and this is, at least as far as I can tell anyway, the cheapest 1TB SSD available on Amazon UK that's available on Prime. A lot of caveats, I know. This gets a thumbs up from me, so if you want to check it out, I'll leave a best as I can a global link in the description for you to take a look at. If you want to see more of these cheapest tech on Amazon videos, I actually have a few more coming up, including an M.2 version of this instead, because I know that a lot of people aren't super interested in SATA SSDs these days. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Also, apologies for me being sick, can't help it. I'm immunocompromised, it happens a lot. Uh, you can also check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, including some other SSD reviews, including some of the ones that you've seen data for in this video. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available at osrtt.com, link in the description. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to you know, hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think of the fan in the comments down below. Otherwise, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.